Hello and welcome back. So today I'm going to walk you through how to make curtains. So the first thing you want to do is obviously measure your windows. So I already did the measurements for the three windows that are located in the kitchen area of the RV. Don't mind my chicken scratch, but the window that is above the sink is 25 inches wide by 19 inches tall. The front window, which is covered by the, oh, I don't even know what it's called, huh? we'll have to look that up, is 61 inches long, 20 inches tall, and the one that's above the dinette is 49 inches long and 20 inches tall. Now these are approximate. I did add about an inch to each number because you need that inch extra for creating your hem lines. So grand total on width is 135 inches, which equals to about 3.75 yards, which is about what I got. So, time to pull out a measuring tape and start marking our lines to create our curtains. So, traditionally, when you're dealing with fabric, you can utilize your fabric in any direction you want. With this particular one, I have to do it in a certain direction, which is not something I'm accustomed to doing. So, we're going to do panels for the longest window. We're probably going to break it down into three or four panels to go all the way across, but be able to bunch them together and tie them so we can let natural light in. So let me show you what I'm talking about. So with this particular pattern that I've chosen for or curtains in the kitchen, as you can see, it has the different herbs on it and it has this beautiful green writing and leaves all over it but it is going in this direction so that means I'm going to have to create panels going from top to bottom so what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab the iron we're gonna nicely iron this out so we have a very smooth unwrinkled material to work with and I'm going to measure from top to bottom, approximately 20 inches. I might go about 21 inches tall all the way across until we have the length that we need, which means I will have to hem these lines, top and bottom. So let's go find the iron. So I couldn't find my iron, so we're going to do this a little wonky, it's okay. So what you're going to want to do is turn your fabric inside out. By that I mean putting your beautiful pattern down on your work surface so you have the back side up. Because this is what you're going to use to mark your lines and your measurements on. And make sure that you have your measurements written down on something so you can easily access those numbers that you need. You're also gonna need a few of these little pins and some good sharp scissors for this next part. And usually, seamstress tape. It's a measuring tape that has all your sizes on it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna work on the sink window covers first curtains. So again, my measurement was 25 inches wide by 19 inches tall. So I'm going to start by going out to about 26 inches across. 
marking that spot and then going upwards from that spot to 19 and then working my way across marking in several spots just so I can have some kind of a straight line you can also use some type of straight rule ruler or straight edge something to help keep your lines straight so you can cut on a straight line so typically you would have a seamstress chalk or pencil that you could mark your fabric with I can't seem to find mine who knows where it went lots of moving in the last couple years probably got misplaced right along with wherever our China is thanks honey so I'm just gonna use a washable pen for the moment so again what you want to do is go from your edge make sure that you have again measured your window and that's going to be from your outside to your outside from your top to your bottom however long you want it to go down and how much you want it to cover if you want it all the way to the floor then you would need to go from the top of your window all the way to the floor now if you're positioning your curtain rods three inches above or four inches above your window then you need to measure about four to five inches above that just so you have enough fabric when you hem those lines that it will still touch the floor or have that appropriate length that you want for your particular item that you are making skirts for so i've got a measurement of 25 inches width so i've got my my measuring tape my seamstress measuring tape all the way at the edge and i am going to mark out to approximately 26 inches just put a little dot there and then from that mark i'm going to go horizontal vertical ha ah. vertical my bad from the end of my fabric along where that dot is straight as I can get it and my length is supposed to be 19 so I'm going to take it out to about about 20 so this will be about 26 by 20 give or take And then what you can do is you can either get yourself a ruler and make your straight lines all the way across so you have something to follow and cut on those lines. Um, I'm going to make a few more dots going across this way towards the end of my fabric because um, I typically I cut pretty straight. I'm not too worried about that. Um, but that is a suggestion if you would like to get a straight ruler or something that you can mark a straight line across as long as you actually dotted across your fabric. <laughs> so when you're buying your material for your curtains, don't just buy what your measurements are. Always buy a little extra just in case. Because you may change your mind. You might get it home and realize, eh, maybe you do want it all the way to the floor. Or you want to change it up. Or you want to use the extra fabric for ties. Or whatever it is you want to use it for. Or even a couple accent pillows to go on your couch. Which is hopefully what I'm going to do. But we'll see when we get there. So... Time to start cutting. So you always want to make sure that you have a pair of good sharp scissors. Good sharp scissors. Um, I have some stinger ones around here, but currently I'm just going to use these. They have a nice flat edge, so I can actually get under and cut my material. So let's get to cutting. So sometimes when you're cutting, you need to apply the 
like some kind of pressure or something to the material so you're cutting nice and even and straight so I just randomly grab something that's got some weight to it um, typically something that's not gonna stain it up but has some weight so give me just a second I gotta I gotta find something real quick <clears throat> Sign it is. So now I have my sign in place. I was starting to get a little crooked in my line and trying to hold it still and steady. So there we go. Now we will continue. So now we've got our fabric cut out. So again, I don't know where my iron is. What you would typically do is fold this over probably about half an inch to an inch over. It just depends on how much you want for your hem stitch all the way around. And you're going to fold all the sides in. And you're going to iron it. And of course, you'll do one side at a time. When we get to these corners, I'm going to show you how to do these corners to make them look clean. So you're going to fold in like that. So oh. I am going to do probably about, um, about half an inch to a quarter of an inch, somewhere in there, all the way around because I'm doing a different style than I typically do. So now we grab safety pins and I try to smooth this out so it'll lay down and then we start sewing. So now that I've got my edging pretty flat on one side and the right length that I want it to be, width, whatever, I'm going to take some of these little pins and I'm just going to periodically stick them in there to hold the fabric in place. <clears throat> you want to, when you do the fold, you want to fold it over like this where you have the color material coming into the white. So you have white to white or the lighter color to the lighter color. In there, everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's one side. So technically, I can bust out the time machine and go ahead and... Show Wait, the song. you said time machine? Sewing machine, okay. uh, sewing machine, sewing machine. So you also want to find string, thread, sorry, sewing thread that matches your material. Uh, the base color of this one is white, so the white works just fine with it. So that's what we will use. Now I have to set up my sewing machine. Step two. So this is my brother sewing machine. I've had this for 14 years or more. I've had it for a very long time. So I have my thread and I have my bobber for the bottom ready to go. I just gotta switch them on. I had black at one point in time on here. Apparently I was doing something with black and I don't remember what it was. It's been a minute since I busted my sewing machine out. So I'm gonna slide that in there and slide that around so it catches. And then Don't mind me, this is going to take a second. And it's got to hit the... There we go. 
go. This is the part I hate the most is having to thread your needle, your thread, having to thread your thread through your sewing needle on your machine. It can be a big pain. A big pain. So lucky for me, mine has a little device on it that makes it a little easier. So let's see if I remember. Nope. So we're going to do this the old fashioned way. So by the old fashioned way, I mean with one of these. See if I can. There we go. These are fun. I'm pull out one of my other needles. I'll show you what it does. So typically, what you would do is you would get this in focus. Okay, it's not gonna focus, but you would slide this in to your needle like so, put your thread here and then pull through and your thread would come through. So I'm gonna do the exact same thing on my sewing machine. to say maybe. sewing machine and come on baby there you go so whatever you don't let go don't let go of either string as you're doing this all right and you're ready to rock and roll so you want to make sure that your tension and everything is set just right on your sewing machine because if you have it too tight, it's going to bunch up your material. If it's too loose, then the hem or whatever it is you're doing on your sewing machine isn't going to hold. So it's always best to test run on a piece of extra material just to make sure that the material that you're using, um, the tension is just right for it. You also want to make sure that you have it set. If yours has a really nifty different settings like mine does, make sure you have the right needle and the right setting for what you're doing. So, I am ready to start sewing. Okay, so now that we have our material onto our sewing machine, you want to make sure that you go back and forth so that you make sure that you have a good start. just like we did with the front we're gonna make sure that we get to the end and then we're going to reverse I'm gonna hit this little button to reverse it we're gonna reverse it so we make sure that we have a good tie knot there um, to help keep our work in place and then we will continue on You'll notice that I'll take a pair of scissors and cut the thread. 
I will go back once I'm done sewing and tie all those ends and cut the remaining thread to make it clean. And there you have it. First seam done. A lot more to go. Make sure that you continue to go forward and hit that reverse button or backtrack on your thread and then go forward again to make sure that you have a strong start so your threading doesn't come unraveled. So now that we have both sides done, um, you can always go back and put a crisscross across <clears throat> your original stitching, but I'm pretty sure and pretty confident that it's going to hold and it's going to hold long enough because I will probably make new ones once I find the material I really wanted, but this is going to do the job. So we're going to start working on the corners. So you can traditionally do this in a couple different ways. You can fold this way, which is how I'm going to do it, and make sure that I have um, the seam backtracking here at some point, but I'm going to stitch there across that so it should hold. Um, you can also, if you don't want to sew, you can actually get uh, tape, fabric tape or fabric glue and do this, um, or hot glue not suggest hot glue because that would, I mean, to press this down and get those flat lines that you're going to want, it's going to hurt. So we suggest that, but we're going to move on to the bottom hem and then we're going to talk about the top hem in a minute. So stay tuned. So I have everything sewn just about except for the top. So we're going to do like we've done the entire time and we're going to put a hemline in here. So from here is where it's up to you to decide what you want it to look like. I'm doing something a little bit different than my traditional curtains, but I will show you what the traditional curtains would be like. So once we've completed our hem, you would simply take and fold it to the diameter of your rod that you're using. Um, so typically for a kitchen, they tend to be smaller rods. So you'd probably fold it about an inch to an inch and a half down, like so. And then you would sew right there, basically on top of your original hemline and you could do Zigzag patterns. Basically, you can make it anything you want. Um, I typically would use a zigzag pattern. Um, um, so that way it would just slide right onto a rod and easy peasy lemon squeezy. Then there's a couple other options that you can do if you're looking for something even easier. Um, you can go to any store like Walmart, Myers, Target that has curtain, curtain rods and accessories. And they have these nifty little curtain holders. So you basically would buy a regular plain chain rod. And then you would buy separately these rings. They're about like this. And they have little clips. And you would clip your fabric to that and thus hanging it up. I was thinking about taking that option, but then I decided I was going to do my own design because, well, it's my design. I can do that. So what I'm going to be doing is the traditional hem, and then I'm going to fold it over probably about an inch, and I am going to basically put a hem stitch top and bottom probably an eighth of an inch off each end 
And in the center, I'm going to every inch and a half, two inches or so, I'm going to create buttonholes. And I'm going to put in buttonholes because I'm going to use twine to tie up my drapes to the rods. That's my thought. That might change. I might be cheap and go get the political piece. Because those I've seen those, those are really cool. So that's it. That's all it is to it. Then once you've completed all your sewing, um, you can go back and reinforce your stitching with a zigzag pattern or um, any kind of other stitching to go over the top to keep your shrink from unraveling on the sides. You can even get tape. You can, uh, hemming tape is a really good product you can get as well. I'm just doing this on the cheap, 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 cheap. Um, so I guess budgeting, budgeting. Um, and you don't have to go to Hobby Lobby to get the material. You can actually use bed sheets. You can use quilts. You can use just about anything that you have laying around the house. Um, you can even go get curtains. And if they're too long, you can always adjust them by cutting and hemming and so on and so forth. Or so, cutting with a knife. Not with a knife. But good try, buddy. So... I hope you liked this video. I hope you understood. Um, hope I didn't go too fast. And please subscribe. Hit that notification bell. And let me know what your thoughts are. Uh, if you guys have any other ways of creating just a simple curtain, let me know. I'd love to hear your comments on it. And please subscribe, like I said. And stay tuned for one of my next tutorials, which will be upholstering the Danette. Stay tuned for that. Can't forget about me. And you can never forget about William. Just got off the phone with my husband. He had a little bit of a rocky start to his round. He felt like his putts were off today. He's got another round tomorrow. Stay tuned. Please subscribe and thank you for watching again.